Lisa, how, how do you advise your clients in wealth management right now without knowing how long this is going to be with us? Look, I think you hit the nail on the head. This is a question of how long and duration. Uh, and so our advice is we have to sit back uh, and stay patient but prepared is really uh, what our watchword has been. Um, clearly, uh, this is a market that is struggling with the potential uh, that this crisis pushes the economy into a recession, uh, and yet it remains to be seen whether that, in fact, will happen. So um, we're in the wait-and-see mode right now. When you right tell now. clients to be prepared, what does that mean? So the preparation, as far as we're concerned, is when is going to be the right time actually to leg in and to leg into cyclicals. Uh, because our view is that if this is not a recession, in fact, we're going to get a V-shaped recovery on the other side of this. Uh, and uh, uh, sectors that are quite exposed to an improvement in the economy, like housing, like financial, like industrials, uh, we would see snap back quite aggressively on the other side of this. Brian, what's your strategy? So, look, it obviously depends on your time horizon. I still believe we're in a secular bull market, right? And so you can have recessions within secular bull markets or very deep destruction in economic activity within secular bull markets. So if you're a long-term investor, recognize that stocks are very cheap to bonds. Federal Reserve policy is very easy. We have a pretty good demographic wave in this country. All a lot that aligns with a secular bull market. If you're more tactical in the near term, you should expect more volatility in markets. Economic uncertainty leads to volatility in markets. We don't know when the cases peak. We don't know the demand destruction and earnings destruction. That'll ultimately happen in that environment. You should expect volatility. So if you are concerned in the near term or you have liquidity needs, um, you need to take this equity overweight that you've had over the past number of years and right size it. If you're somebody like me who has a long term perspective and need gr needs growth in my portfolio over the long term, I suspect we will move. I know we will ultimately move past this, and we will move past this in an environment where stocks are very cheap to bonds and policy is going to be very accommodative. What happens to your uh, uh, S&P earnings number for the year? So you've got to, I mean, you've got to bring it lower, um, you know, and so if you think you're going into a recession, on average in recessions, you're down, you know, 20 percent or so. I don't, I don't think it gets that bad. I ultimately think are that... Are this 165 school that we keep hearing from? Yeah, and, and what type of multiple are you willing to pay on that, which means, you know, markets correct more from here. I mean, what we saw in, you know, some of these other infectious disease outbreaks is somewhere along the lines of a, you know, 13 to 18 percent decline in markets. So we're, we're you know, we're working to really get there. you compare it with past... Health, yeah, no, I mean, this, un this, this uncertainty persists. Yeah, this uncertainty persists longer. And, um, you know, again, it, it's a good point. We simply just don't know what the ultimate hit to economic activity and to earnings will be. But uh, what we do know is that the medical community will move out ahead of this at some point. And we also know that policymakers on the fiscal and monetary side are working this. So I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get too overly bearish, but I would expect some more uh, volatility in the near term. Lisa, you said maybe prepare to pick up some cyclical names that would do better when the economy rebounds. I mean, would you be buying airlines, <laughs> cruise ships? Uh, I think it's premature, uh, you know, to be wading into where the demand destruction probably um, is going to be the greatest. But what we would say um, is that we'd be very careful about what people have, have thought is the safety trade, quote unquote. Um, and so we remain um, quite concerned that coming into this crisis, we had a lot of secular growth stocks that were quite frothy, um, and we don't necessarily think that they're going to be immune here. Uh, and so our preference has been to kind of hollow out portfolios, not really focused on, on some of those winners like consumer discretionary and tech. Um, and really barbell between what we think is true safety, right? So things in housing, things in utilities, things in consumer staples, uh, and barbell that against uh, some of the financials, industrials, energy, uh, more cyclically oriented housing leveraged names. So you like financials? We do like financials. Ultimately, if you've got so the an ten-year yield below. On an intermediate t time horizon, we absolutely do like financials here. Brian? Um, I, I still think we're, we're ultimately going to get back into a growth market. And, and even growth has done, has done well compared to uh, the more 
value-oriented cyclical parts of the market in here. And so, yeah, um, if you, if as we move past this and you get a bit of recovery in economic activity, then, then obviously your materials, industrials, financials will outperform in the near term. I think what this reminds, what this, what this really tells me and should tell all investors is that we continue to persist in a slow growth world. And in this slow growth world, shocks uh, will be will be potentially damaging. And I don't see how we get out of this slow growth environment for most of the rest of our careers. And and I plan to do this for a long while if you'll continue to have me, Carl. So um, so ultimately, it's going to be where can you find growth in a slow growth world? I think that persists. Mike Wilson has written about risk premium. Uh, we're looking at 10 year now, 92 six. Yes. Um, so at what point are lower yields no longer constructive I, for I anyone? Think, I, I think we're there. We're there. Uh, I, you know, um, you know, one of the, the uh, uh, noted economists at Morgan Stanley Marty Leibowitz has been very famous for his, you know, upside down frown, you know, where his thesis is, look, at a certain point, uh, you know, low rates actually mean lower multiples. And the reason for that is what's embedded in low rates is low negative real yields or re negative real growth. Um, and if you look at what uh, we've observed really over the last uh, three weeks is a degradation uh, of the expectations on real growth. It's that view about recession. And to your point, if you get a recession, you're going to see those corporate earnings uh, forecasts get hit. And so that is the risk. Uh, and you have to look at where the, you know, some of the operating leverage is the greatest and is not discounted. Uh, and we think it's in some of those tech uh, and consumer discretionary cyclicals, which are not as stable uh, as, as we think a lot of people uh, have bet.